Hey, Mr. Myers is here with 8-6 Absolute and Conditional Convergence. And this is somewhat of a review for, um, for these sequences and series. And most importantly, just testing convergence for series. So check this out. If you have an alternating series that converges and you take the absolute value of that alternating series, what happens? Well, all the negatives go away. So you have all positives. Well, that positive series is going to be bigger than that alternating series because it has, doesn't have the negatives in it to kind of slow it down, I guess you can say. If you take the absolute value of that alternating series and the, the absolute value converges, meaning the positive one converges, then the alternating series is going to be called absolutely convergent. It's absolutely convergent. Excuse me. However, if the absolute value of that alternating series, so the positive part of the alternating series, if it diverges, then the alternating series is considered conditionally convergent. So let's take a look at add a few examples here and we're going to see if these are absolutely con convergent or conditionally convergent now we already know that they're going to be alternating series so really we're just checking to see if uh, if we took the absolute value of them do they you know is it convergent conditionally convergent or maybe the series itself is divergent we'll check and usually we'll use the alternating series test and if that doesn't work then we'll use the uh the nth term test to see if it diverges. Let's take a look at some examples, shall we? We shall, because I said so. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, so we know negative 1 to the n over n converges because that is an alternating harmonic series. So we know this converges because this is an alternating harmonic series. We know the harmonic series is 1 over n, right, which is a p series with, with a p equal 1. And the, and the uh, alternating one converges. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the absolute value apparently my phone thinks I'm talking to it. This is the only unit which my phone keeps going off because I say series and it thinks I'm saying Siri. So the absolute value is uh, the harmonic series, which we know diverges. This one we know diverges, right? Because it's harmonic. Harmonic, harmonic, harmonic. All right, so what does that tell me? That tells if the absolute value of it diverges, then that means that this one right here converge it, converges conditionally all right all right let's take a look at another one Boom. that wasn't that bad okay so this one here we're going to use a, a little rule and i didn't talk about this but the little rule is look if this is this is alternating right because cosine goes up and down negative positive negative positive if the absolute value series converges well all, that's all the positives. So if you put the negatives in there and it gets, it's going to be smaller, that's got to converge too, right? It's kind of like the, it's kind of like the direct comparison test. You know, when, if the bigger, if the bigger series converges, then the littler series converges. Well, the absolute value of the series is bigger than the regular series. So if that converges, so does the other one. In fact, it absolutely converges. So let's take a look at just the absolute value one here. So I'm going to say absolute value of cosine n over n squared. All right, and, and that one I'm going, to, I'm going to compare. I'm going to use a direct comparison test. So I'm going to compare. I'm going to compare this to 1 over n squared. Now I know that the absolute value of cosine n over n squared, that's always going to be less than 1 over n squared because cosine n, the biggest it could possibly be is 1. So it's going to be less than... Uh, less than 1 over n squared for values n greater than 1, right? Because n is 1 and 
it's going to go into infinity. So it is going to be less than 1 over n squared. And so, and we know that this one right here converges by the p series. p is equal to 2, which is greater than 1. So I'm going to say, since this here is true, the sum tis true. Tis true. Tis true. That's right, Siri. Tis true. All right. <laughs> The series uh, absolute value of cosine n over n squared is is going to converge. I found something on the web about this absolute value of cosine n over n squared. Check it out. You did. Well, let me check it out. Wow, look at that. You know what she says? She says it converges. Converges by the direct comparison test. So... Move this guy up a little bit. So my original one is going to converge absolutely. Okay. Because the absolute value converges, the other ones, the smaller ones got to converge absolutely. All right, let's take a look at another one. Last one here. All right. So we've got e to the n or negative e to the n over n to the e. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at, well, let's, let's do this first. Let's take the limit as n approaches infinity of negative e to the n over n to the e. So we should always try the nth term test to see what's going on here to see if that's going to um, not equal to zero. Because if the nth term test equals to zero, then We've got to try something else, and we could probably we'll probably try the alternating series test. But the alternating series test here is going to be inconclusive. Uh, we're going to end up with infinity in the well. It's not really going to be inconclusive. It's going to go to infinity. So we're if we ever get that situation, we're going to go back, look at the nth term test, and notice that this gets this is getting this is getting plus or minus really really fast, right? And this is not so fast. This is a little slower. So this, if it's negative, then we have negative infinity because it's going negative fast. But positive would be positive infinity, so it's going positive fast. Well, what happens if it goes negative infinity and positive infinity? We can't figure out what's going on. Then that is, does not exist. Well, does not exist, does not exist is not equal to zero, right? And in order for, uh, and that tells us, not in order for, but that tells us, that tells us that this diverges. By the nth term test. Recall the nth term test was the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n. If it's not equal to zero, then it diverges. Uh, if it is equal to zero, nth term test is inconclusive. We've got to use something else. So in this case, this series here diverges. Do we have to check if it's conditionally or absolutely? No, because it diverges. So if it diverges, there's no conditionally or or absolutely convergent of any part, right? It just diverges, okay? So, guys, here we go. This is absolutely convergent and conditionally convergent. And a little bit of review here I'm looking at using some of those tests. I'll talk to you later. Bye.